Naughty, sweet, and salty sweet Shin X loyal, coquettish, and doting wife's cool star slash twin stars roam the world slash Tang Shin Yun was killed by the lightning strike of the ascending god, but after the failed ascent, she clearly felt that something ran into her divine sea, claiming to be able to bring her back to life. That was an inhumane game, Tang Shin Yun curled his lips and smiled, throwing a grenade. Under harsh weather conditions, alien species descend, interstellar pirate raid, bionic humans rise up to resist all possible variables are like ants and floating trees in the face of strong strength. However, Tang Shin Yun suspected that she had killed a crazy head, otherwise how could she see her senior brother who had already died in the secret realm? She would have killed a few more monsters to suppress her surprise. The name Xia Xingmian has always been ranked first on the strength list. His indifference is ingrained in his bones, and he never helps any player, even if he has this ability, even if others offer exorbitant prices. Until after a game, the surviving players doubted life and left crazy comments under the official posts of the game app is Xia Dashin is actually willing to team up with players. She's still a woman. Startled my chin. Isn't that woman Tang Xin Yun, the potential stock in the top five of the beginner list? Dashin really only knows how to team up with big shots, drooling with envy. When Xia Xingmian encountered this, Tang Xin Yun fell silent, and she looked at the man buried in her neck, who was coquettishly blushing. She chuckled lightly, causing the man to blush. Who would have thought that a man who usually looks strict and meticulous would have such a lovely contrast? Chapter 1 Cancer City 01 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Alert! Player Identity Error Alert! The system is under a mental attack. Ding! Successfully converted player identity. In the painful and splitting head, the rapid electronic mechanical sound fills the brain, stirring the nerves and causing severe pain. Tang Xinyun slowly opened her eyes and, in a daze, found herself standing intact on a small boat. The gentle breeze brushed against her eyebrows, and she stared blankly at the shimmering lake in front of her. At the same time, Tang Xinyun was shocked to find that a semi-transparent blue panel appeared in front of him out of thin air, with a large red occupying the center. Tang Xinyun reacted quickly and had strong adaptability. Although she knew nothing about the situation in front of her, her rapidly beating heart told her an undeniable fact. Tang Xinyun was alive again. Time turned back an hour ago, and a purple thunder as thick as a baby's arm fiercely struck the woman standing in the middle of the pit. The woman's bare skin was extensively cracked, her flesh and skin were torn apart, and her wounds were bleeding with crimson blood. She had a stubborn expression on her face, holding her long sword tightly and pointing it straight at the sky. Her rebellious face showed a frivolous eyebrow, and she provocatively and recklessly said, If you have the courage, just chop me to death. Sure enough, speaking big words would flash to her waist. In the last moment before Tang Xinyan's consciousness dissipated, there was not a good piece of flesh all over her body, and her wounds were all charred and black. In her almost dilated pupils, the last powerful thunderbolt was reflected, illuminating her dark eyes. She remembered. Tang Xinyin's breathing was disrupted for a moment, and his ears were filled with the rapid heartbeat. She was bound to a system called Escape Game, which promised to bring her a rebirth. Tang Xinyin was a native cultivator, but in the end, he was killed by purple thunder and failed to ascend in the Ascension Thunderstorm. In the final moments of soul depletion, she burst out with a strong sense of survival, prompting the survival system to completely bind her. She has some understanding of the current situation. Although she doesn't know much about the world here, Tang Shenyun smiled and won't miss any opportunity. The rower of the small boat received such a lively girl for the first time. His men worked hard and said, Girl, I've been carrying passengers for so many years, and it's the first time I've received such a happy boatman. Tang Xinyin's doubts were mild. With a smile on her lips, she asked the boatman, Uncle, how do you say that? She really can't understand. What is the first time I've received a happy sailor like her? Is there anyone else with a depressed face? 
In Tang Xinyin's world, there is never any difficulty that would make her face depressed, let alone being reborn is already a delightful thing. The boatman raised his hand and squeezed his sleeve to wipe the sweat beads on his forehead. He replied inexplicably, there have been many people coming to Cancer City recently. Some of them curse without stopping when they board the boat, while others look disheartened as if they are going to die. Even if we ask someone, they don't pay attention. Tang Xinyun had some ideas in her mind, and she guessed that it might be someone named Player who had also entered Cancer City in the past few days. Along the way, Tang Xinyun used her gentle affinity to gather some useful information. 1. Cancer City is the technologically advanced city among the 12 star cities, with the top tier being Twin Cities and the least advanced being Aquarius City. 2. Cancer City has recently attracted many players, and Tang Xinyun knows that she is a beginner. Her life weapon was disconnected from her after being reborn, so she must use the weapons in the city to protect herself. Cancer City is surrounded by lakes on all sides, and there are only two modes of transportation to get outside, either by water or by air. After getting off the ship, the old boatman didn't mention the money, indicating that the system was well regulated, and Tang Xinyun didn't bother too much. As soon as she stood firmly in the city with her feet, the electronic sound of the game system rang in her mind. Dear player Tang Xinyun, welcome to the escape game. Players are advised to strive to survive in Cancer City for 30 days, with 5,000 players and 611589 NPCs playing together after 30 days of survival, players are considered to have completed the game and can receive a basic clearance reward of 20 points for this instance Tang Xinyun felt another pain in the sea of gods, and a large amount of information surged in her mind, causing her temples to throb uncontrollably. Successfully transmitted background Wishing player Tang Xinyun a pleasant game. Tang Xinyun felt dizzy in front of her, but after calming down, she quickly scanned the data transmitted by the system in her mind. It is the entirety of the modern world. This greatly overturned her cognition, while also realizing the cruelty of escape games. To die in the game is to die in reality. Tang Xinyun walked into Cancer City while sorting through his mind. The city is a bustling scene, with towering skyscrapers and black screens scrolling through some popular stars. Because it is close to the lake, the wind that rushes towards the city brings some coolness. Now it is summer, which dispels people's worries and adds a bit of relief. Tang Xinyun wandered around the city and realized that it would be difficult for her to survive without a penny in Cancer City for a day. In the end, she decided to go to a place where she could work hard and earn money. A construction site. At a city edge in Cancer City, steel bars are inserted straight into the soil, and the surface is refracted by the dazzling cold light of sunlight. Dust is flying and choking. The workers on the construction site were naked, their bulging muscles sweating beads that were casually wiped away. The men lowered their heads and worked hard to do their work. When they saw a woman dressed in bright clothes walking towards here, they drew some extra attention. The air was filled with a sour sweat smell, and the distant crane was moving up and down in an orderly manner. Tang Xinyin's arrival caught the attention of the contractor. He frowned, his dark face puzzled, and asked, Miss, construction is still ongoing here. What are you doing here for? Tang Xinyin nodded and smiled at the corners of his mouth, May I ask if there are still people here? The head of the contractor was speechless and choked. He didn't think this woman with thin arms and legs could do such a tough job here, he just thought she was playing around. The man spoke with a gentle tone to drive people away. Tang Xinyun knew that his appearance would definitely be looked down upon. She clasped her hands together and sold out first, but when the contractor hesitated, she requested to give it a try first. The contractor couldn't believe that these delicate flowers kept in the greenhouse could do anything, so he casually pointed to a pile of bricks piled up on the ground and advised Tang Xinyun again. Tang Xinyun waved his hand and smiled confidently, knowing that she had earned the money. She had just entered this world and didn't understand anything else, and even after walking around, the shops in the city didn't hire employees. In the blink of an eye, 
Tang Shenyun thought of his inexhaustible brute force and hesitated repeatedly before deciding to come to the construction site to move bricks. Not far away, the bustling laborers also vaguely heard Tang Shenyun coming to the construction site to contribute. They had the same idea as the contractor, only thinking that this delicate young lady was acting recklessly and mocking her for not having experienced labor. Suddenly, they wanted to experience the suffering of the people. Tang Shenyun walked lightly and came to the brick pile. He turned around and asked the foreman how much each person could move at once. After obtaining the result, she first tied more than thirty stone bricks with thick ropes, and then, under the astonished gaze of everyone, she easily lifted the bricks and delivered them to the designated place without blushing or panting. The contractor grinned, feeling that Tang Shenyun was just starting to be powerful and would give up voluntarily later on. At the same time, he also calculated the money for her from the bottom of his heart. He gave her twenty-five banknotes for the move and gave her more to send her away. Chapter 2 Cancer City 02 You are listening at NovelFull.audio As a result, under the shocked gaze of a group of laborers, Tang Shenyun orderly moved bricks one after another, with bloodstains on his fingertips and debris on his shoulders, which she ignored. After more than ten trips back and forth, the laborers around stopped their work and watched Tang Shenyun move bricks. She was already beautiful, and her clean appearance made the hearts of the old men race. A beautiful person always surprises their eyes with anything they do, even if it's moving bricks on a construction site. Tang Shenyun put down the brick on her shoulder, and in just over an hour, she finished the work of all three people. The speed and efficiency were greatly appreciated by the contractor. This is the woman who has summoned the son of destiny, the one who carries bricks. One person's salary is 400 yuan per day. After you finish three jobs, we'll give you 1,200 yuan. The contractor led the person to an open space. He first took out a stack of money from his pocket, rubbed his fingers, and pointed out 1,200 yuan bills with saliva stars. Tang Shenyun obediently accepted the wages he had earned through his hard work, and surprisingly felt an inexplicable sense of achievement in his heart. She wanted to discuss other matters with the contractor, but she keenly sensed a nauseating gaze. Following his gaze, Tang Shenyun squinted and looked at the Mediterranean man with a big belly not far away. The chief foreman suddenly became interested today and decided to inspect the progress of the construction site. As soon as he approached, he noticed that the workers were absent minded With a cold face, he pulled out one person and sternly questioned, learning that a beautiful woman had actually arrived at the construction site. His rough fingers caressed his chin, greasy beads of sweat rubbing against his hands, and he casually rubbed them onto his body. The chief foreman carried his hands behind his back and looked around before realizing the beautiful figure, his heart drooling. Lu Jin, I see you don't want to work anymore. The contractor heard the sound and a cold sweat oozed from his forehead. He knew that the chief foreman was notorious for being difficult to deal with. Now, hearing his tone, Lu Jin smiled bitterly in his heart. The golden chain between the chief foreman's neck flickered, and Tang Shenyun couldn't help but take a few more glances. In the eyes of the man, it was a sign of drama. Women who despise poverty and wealth are best handled. This little beauty, this construction site is not the place where people like you should come, the chief foreman grinned, his yellow teeth smoking, causing Tang Shenyun to take a few steps back, with a look of disgust on his face. Lu Jinzhang opened his mouth, seemingly trying to explain for Tang Shenyun, but he was afraid of causing trouble and decided to be a transparent person next to him, praying in his heart that Tang Shenyun could escape. Where do you think my aunt should go? Tang Shenyun's smile in her eyes couldn't reach the bottom of her eyes. She smiled at the man across from her and burst into laughter. So let's go to the office and chat. The chief foreman wanted to come forward to help, but was dodged by Tang Shenyun. Seeing the woman's undisguised disgust on his face, the man felt an unnamed anger in his heart. He gritted his teeth and immediately thought of the woman begging for mercy at his feet soon after, feeling better in his heart. 
Tang Xinyun didn't want to chat with such people. His gaze glanced over the metal jewelry worn by the man like a nouveau riche, and he gave a sly smile, okay. The wool is all in front of me, there's no reason not to pull it. The chief foreman greatly appreciated Tang Xinyun's wit, and he decided to let go of the woman's plea for mercy shortly. Tang Xinyun smiled as she turned around to talk to the chief foreman when a force grabbed her sleeve. She turned her head and looked at Lu Jin stuttering. You. Zhang Yong is not a good person, little girl, you should take the opportunity to run away. This sentence seemed to confirm Lu Jin's great determination, and his tight shoulders suddenly relaxed like a leaking balloon. His tone was firm and he repeated it again. He also couldn't bear it, he couldn't watch a young girl in her prime jump into the pit of fire. Tang Xinyun tilted his head to look at him, then pulled out his sleeve and gently comforted him, it's okay, don't worry about you. She doesn't like owing favors, so she naturally knows that if she runs away, the Mediterranean man won't let Lu Jin go first. When others kindly remind her, she won't implicate innocent people. Seeing the woman behind him not keeping up, Zhang Yong turned around and glared fiercely at Lu Jin, who was pursing his lips behind the woman, with a cold snort coming from his throat. Tang Xinyun looked as pure as a little white rabbit on his face, with his dark apricot eyes curved into crescents. He entered the office without hesitation and didn't forget to lock it in the end. Zhang Yong once again sighed at this person's wit, rubbing his hands like a fly as he curled his lips and smiled in front of Tang Xinyun, putting on what he believed to be the most handsome smile. In fact, Tang Xinyun's fist stiffened when he saw his oily face piled up. Zhang Yong approached and opened his arms to embrace the woman, but was dodged by Tang Xinyun. He became angry with embarrassment and said, Don't toast, don't eat, and get punished. Don't scratch this beautiful face by someone who doesn't know how serious it is. Otherwise, you will cry. The man smiled with a lewd expression on his face, but heard a short light laugh floating in the air, and the mockery inside was like slapping Zhang Yang's oily face. Tang Xinyun kneaded his wrist and told him with his fist that she liked to drink fine wine, so it was better to leave the toast to him. A few minutes later, the punches that rained down finally stopped. Zhang Yong was beaten and his face was bruised and swollen, with a few broken teeth and blood mixed in and spat out. Don't hit me. Auntie. I was wrong, Auntie. Zhang Yong was beaten to a state of confusion, with unclear speech and a frantic plea for mercy. Tang Xinyun took the opportunity to roll up the wife notebook saved by the man and left gracefully. As for Zhang Yong, Tang Xinyun tied him to the desk in the office, stripped off his shirt, torn his fat with coarse hemp rope, and his valuable accessories were swept away. Zhang Yong suffered indescribably, that woman is a monster. A little heavier on him makes him unable to make any sound. After tapping the man's mute hole, Tang Xinyun, who had gained a lot, cleaned his dusty cardigan and sunscreen jacket and hummed a tune as he walked towards the most famous hotel in the city near Cancer City. Orange Hotel. She carried the phone that came with the game, booked a room, went to the front desk, swiped the number to pay, took the room card, and went to the elevator. Undoubtedly the most famous hotel, the tiles under its feet are adorned with patterns, wiped spotlessly, reflecting the light above its head. The chandelier hanging from the ceiling was adorned with flowing crystals, and even the green plant leaves in the flower pot next to the elevator were wiped clean, standing tall and lush. Tang Xinyun is not very good at using elevators, after all, in her world, teleportation arrays or flying swords can solve these problems. She even tinkered with her phone for a while before fully understanding it, stumbling and placing an order. Fortunately, the business of Orange Hotel was booming and there were many guests coming and going. Tang Xinyun followed behind others in troubled waters and fish in troubled waters. She was unforgettable and learned things quickly. After taking the elevator once, she gained a general understanding. Her room was on the seventh floor, and as the elevator slowly ascended, Tang Xinyun's head briefly became dizzy, making her unable to help but recall the pitiful scene of spitting out bile when she first learned how to fly the imperial sword. 
Learning from people on the same floor, Tang Shenyun swiped his card and entered the room. The room was tidied up neatly. There was a large French window in the hotel room, and the sun was warm on the wooden floor, in sharp contrast to the surrounding coldness. After a brief rest, Tang Shenyun decided to collect materials first. She has several escape game scenes transmitted to her by the system in her mind, and capable players will solve the problem of satiety in the first time. The time spent moving bricks has passed, and Tang Shenyun can only accelerate and try not to fall behind others. She happened to have dirty clothes on her body, so she needs to change into another one. Leaving the Orange Hotel, the time arrived in the afternoon. The scorching sun shone brightly, and the high temperature diluted to roast the entire cancer city. Tang Shenyun followed the sign to a department store. She licked her dry lips, walked to the roadside, bought a bottle of ice water, and drank it while entering. There were many people coming and going in the mall, so Tang Shenyun quickly found the instruction panel and made a preliminary plan for himself. Chapter 3 Cancer City 03 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Her space also follows her into the game. Unfortunately, Tang Shenyun's inseparable contract twin swords were not included in the system and lost contact with her. Even her space has been limited by escape games, and the space capacity has suddenly shrunk to only 10 square meters. However, the system told her that the storage capacity can be expanded with points as the level increases. Tang Shenyun wandered around the mall. Every time she came out of a store, she carried large packages of food with both hands and walked to the sparsely populated corners. With a movement of the Divine Sea, everything was received into the space. She packed a small space of 10 square meters full, with the most water and instant noodles, followed by some novel fast foods such as self-heating hot pot and self-heating rice. At the same time, she also purchased flashlights, helmets, iron pots, and other items for future needs. In a corner of the space, there were cotton padded clothes everywhere, and she was well dot organized with anti-freezing and cold equipment. When he returned to the Orange Hotel, it was getting late. Tang Xinyun first went back to his room to put down what he had bought, making some space, and then hurriedly went out to the pharmacy to buy medicine. Coincidentally, Tang Xinyun caught up with a promotion at the big pharmacy and bought all the drugs promoted by the salesperson. The salesperson was overjoyed and harbored rumors that her commission for this month would increase again. Tang Xian casually held cotton candy bought from the roadside in his hand, and contained it in his mouth. Everything was stored in the space. She plans to go back to the hotel for dinner, and before leaving, she saw that the restaurant there looked very upscale. The self.service restaurant in the hotel also has a large number of people, and Tang Xinyun received many lines of sight as soon as he entered. Her fair face was tender and translucent under the incandescent light, her eloquent and agile eyes flickered, her crimson lips curled up, and she naturally went to the self.service dining area to choose dinner. She has been adapting to Pigu since she started practicing, and she was not interested in eating before. But now her immortal power has dissipated, and as an ordinary person, she has developed a desire for food. Tang Shenyun had never seen so many different things before. She had no stomach for herself and only picked out a few things she particularly wanted to eat. All sorts of things were enough for half a plate. There are many seats, but very few are available. Tang Shenyun quickly found a vacant seat at the table where the guests had just left. She quickly sat down on the vacant seat, which was very beautiful. She could also enjoy the night sky of Cancer City by the window. She grabbed her chopsticks, stuffed broccoli into her mouth, and enjoyed the night view of the starry sky while eating. The candle placed on the table hit her face, and the clearly extinguished shadow added a mysterious and hazy feeling to her eyebrows and eyes. Tang Shenyun raised his eyebrows and saw what she had heard. Her senses had greatly improved due to her cultivation, so even sitting in the seat could hear voices not far away. Two tables away from her, two men and two women sat there, their gaze vaguely scanning towards the woman sitting by the window eating elegantly. 
Do you think she could be an NPC? Such a beautiful NPC is really rare. The man with highlighted yellow hair gave an evil smile, his eyes raised at the end, and he laughed heartily. At this time, there is still time to pick mostly NPCs, and even players are mostly vases that rely on men, unable to make any waves. The two women sitting side by side looked at each other, and they were the vases in Huang Mao's mouth that relied on men to pass the level. When they first saw Tang Xinyun, a strong hostility rose in their hearts. They didn't want Huang Mao to seduce them. What do you care about her? Brother Yu, isn't it enough to have the two of us? The woman with big red lips blinked her seductive eyes, as if her gaze could be drawn. Huang Mao laughed twice and went up to comfort the woman. But the newcomers are blessed with a lucky buff, we would rather kill the wrong than let go of the boss. The man sitting next to Huang Mao secretly reminded Huang Yu and fiercely reached out his hand to draw around his neck. Huang Yu sneered and said, I think you want to do something else, kid. Ha ha ha, the first person to show filial piety must be you, boss. Tang Xinyun swallowed the last piece of pasta and drank the orange juice brought by the waiter, still feeling unsatisfied. He was also half full. At the same time, she has gained a full understanding of her appetite. Tang Xinyun didn't care about those four people, just remembered their rough faces. Players inevitably end up killing each other, and she needs to try her best to identify people who are players and take precautions in advance. She turned a deaf ear and immediately returned to her room to take a shower after finishing dinner. Water mist fell on the glass door, and as the door opened, a graceful woman slowly emerged from the mist. Tang Xinyun was wrapped in a bathrobe, her small face flushed with hot water. She grabbed a towel and wiped her wet hair that was still dripping. Blowing his head dry in the bathroom, Tang Xinyun put down the hair dryer and sniffed it carefully. The aroma of shampoo is strong, but there is also a strange smell mixed in. Her gaze eventually fell on the drain. Opening the filter, a faint odor permeated the sewer. If it weren't for the keen sense of smell enhanced by his cultivation constitution, Tang Xinyun might not have noticed it yet. She returned to the room, found a small wooden stick, squatted down to the drain, and used the stick to explore downwards. Suddenly, the front end encountered a soft object, and Tang Xinyun shook his wooden stick to poke it. She pursed her lips and held her breath, using a wooden stick to vigorously pick out that thing. A dead mouse. From the degree of decay, it appears to have just died. Strangely, how could there be mice in the drain? Tang Xinyun threw the dead mouse into the trash can and then threw the garbage out of the room. She inspected the entire room inside and outside, then went back to wash the bathroom clean. She found a plug to block the drain, tightly fitting it to ensure that nothing came in. She didn't know if she had made too much fuss, but in the escape game, she was very willing to sacrifice her life. If a small mistake led to future tragedy, it would not be worth the loss. Returning to bed, Tang Xinyun, who had been busy all day, quickly fell asleep. On the second day of the game, after finishing breakfast in the room, Tang Xinyun decided to go out and buy weapons. She is good at playing with her swords, but her weapon is gone, so she can only try to find a convenient one. Although she is involved in all of them, she can only say that she has learned every subject, but she is not proficient in any of them. Not far downstairs from the hotel, Tang Xinyun scanned a shared bike with his phone and finally got on the road smoothly after three bumps and turns. She rode in the city, paying attention to nearby shops, and eventually stopped at a blacksmith shop selling cold weapons. Opening the brown curtain, the scorching temperature seeped into the depths of his pores, causing Tang Xinyun to frown. The shop owner heard footsteps and leaned his head out from the front desk. He pinched his raised white beard with his fingertips and looked shrewdly at the passers-by. In a hoarse voice, he asked, Welcome, what does the little girl want? Tang Xinyun looked around and found that the store was very small, with a corridor leading to a place for making iron and refining utensils. There is a display cabinet with a wall placed behind the shop owner, 
and various weapons are stored in a glass box. Do you have a pair of swords? Tang Xinyun arrived at the front desk and even after scanning the circle, she couldn't help but ask her question. The shop owner paused as he rubbed his beard, then pondered for a moment. Just as Tang Xinyun couldn't resist wanting to change his weapon, the old man finally lifted his head and slowly spoke, Yes, I'll get it for you. Tang Xinyun's eyes lit up and he nodded obediently. The old man lifted the curtain behind the right door and walked out after a while. Tang Xinyun's eyes were burning as he looked at the double swords in his hand, then turned to the old man and said, How do we sell them? No. Tang Xinyun felt a bit disappointed in his heart. Is this not selling her? As she lost her composure, the old man spoke again, See you off. Coming out of the blacksmith's shop, Tang Xinyun looked at the scorching sun hitting him and then lowered his head to look at the double swords in his hand, feeling excited and unbearable in his heart. Just as she touched two swords, a cold electronic sound echoed in her mind. Congratulations to player Tang Xinyun for receiving a gift from NPC. The gift can be retrieved from the game backpack by the player after the game ends and used permanently. Chapter 4 Cancer City 04 You are listening at NovelFull.audio At this moment, Tang Xinyun truly realized his good luck. However, before leaving, she spent tens of thousands of yuan to buy a long whip, because it was also one of the few martial arts she had learned excellently. However, Tang Xinyun was more inclined to use modern thermal weapons in his mind. That small bullet can actually kill a person in the blink of an eye. The weapon is small and easy to carry, except for some with strong recoil, but she is more interested in it. Tang Xinyun walked around and inquired, only then did he vaguely know that to purchase thermal weapons, he had to go to the black organization on the other side of the dock to purchase them. She exchanged contact information and the two parties quickly agreed on the time and location of the transaction. Noon on the third day of the game, at the mouth goods store next to the dock. Tang Xinyun didn't know what the mouth care store was, but the person sent her a photo and she could also touch it, so she wasn't worried about not finding a place. In the afternoon, Tang Xinyun stayed at the hotel and had dinner at the self.service restaurant. On the third day of the game, after having lunch, Tang Xinyun took out his phone and fully utilized the navigation to find the store. With a joyful expression on her face, she briskly rushed towards the supplies store, ignoring the inexplicable expressions of the surrounding citizens. Push open the black glass door, the space inside is very small. Tang Xinyun followed the instructions given by the other party and first put down the trading coins. Then, he waited for a few minutes before receiving three guns and a box of spare bullets. At the same time, the black organization kindly gave her two grenades. Satisfied, Tang Xinyun put his things into the space and walked out with a red face and a lowered head. She has already learned through systematic science popularization what Coca-Cola stores are for and why those people look at her so strangely. Isn't that treating her like a lunatic? Tang Xinyun dodged and fled, walking on the lakeside road, raising her hand to stroke her hot cheeks. It took her a while to regain her divergent attention and forget about the embarrassing incident. As he walked, Tang Xinyun keenly observed that the lake water seemed to be slightly turbid, and white mist seemed to rise faintly on the surface of the lake. The concentration of the white mist was very shallow, and Tang Xinyun noticed this strange phenomenon in his eyes. A woman dressed in light sportswear walked aimlessly along the path, but suddenly she stopped and blinked her eyes, looking around. Tang Xinyun raised her eyebrows and slowly lifted her feet. She dodged and turned into the alley, walking around the intricate corner. The sound in her ears became more and more obvious, indicating that she was walking in the right direction. Until he stopped at a dead end, Tang Xinyun held his breath and hid behind the wall, sticking his head out and revealing one eye to spy on the situation in the alley. Under the dim gaze, in the small alley shrouded in shadows, a man and a woman stood side by side, like a wall blocking Tang Xinyun's view. Tang Xinyun calmly explored forward and finally saw a young man constantly retreating in front of them. 
He furrowed his neck and slowly moved back with trembling steps, looking at the two people in front of him with a frightened expression. He exclaimed in panic, What are you doing? Are you murderers who break the law? The woman sneered lightly and interrupted the trembling words of the young man, Ha! Huh? Don't be foolish, there aren't these things here. What are you talking to him about? The burly man choked his nose and was about to step forward with his fist. The newcomer is just fantastic. Kill him directly, and we'll take his lucky buff. What? Ah! The boy's lips trembled, his face turned pale, and he was punched by the man directly onto the wall, slammed to the ground, convulsing a few times before spitting out a mouthful of blood. After dealing with the new player, the two of them turned around and planned to leave. Tang Xinyun saw clearly the appearance of the two. The woman had a tear mole under the corner of her eye, and the man was wearing black sunglasses. Before the two of them walked quickly to the corner, Tang Xinyun lightly tiptoed and quickly flashed away. Less than three seconds after Tang Xinyun left, the woman stood behind the wall, scanning the winding path with a wary expression. Her bright and gloomy face twisted and she said, it seems like there was a stinky mouse eavesdropping just now. The man in sunglasses shook his head. He didn't notice, but he knew that the woman's five senses were very sensitive, which naturally indicated that someone had indeed stood here recently and witnessed the two of them taking action. The man was very confident in his own strength and asked the woman to leave. Don't worry, just kill in the last few days, it's just a matter of time. The woman snorted coldly and quickly left with the man. Tang Xinyun, who had left from here, sat on a leisure bench at the entrance of the alley. She wore a pair of bought sunglasses on her face and looked at a newspaper in her hand, pretending to be reading it but paying all her attention to that exit. The old uncle sitting next to her lit the money in his hand and smiled, causing his face to wrinkle into a chrysanthemum. This girl is really strange. She hurriedly walked up to him, snatched his sunglasses and newspaper, and gave him a hundred yuan bill, saying it was to buy his things. The old man took a deep breath and felt that today's weather was particularly beautiful, the air was particularly clear, and everything was so smooth. Tang Xinyan's apricot eyes were blocked by sunglasses and he looked straight at the alley entrance. In the shadow, the figures of one tall and one short gradually became clear, and the two of them came out. Tang Xinyun quietly raised the newspaper and watched the two of them walk away, then stayed in place for a few minutes. As expected, the two of them returned to the alley and wandered around. Noticing the gaze falling on him, Tang Xinyun remained motionless and sat in place reading the newspaper, as if it were real, fooling the two of them directly. Tang Xinyun breathed a sigh of relief until it was confirmed that the two of them had completely walked away and would not come back. She can't be tough with these two people either, but the game has only been going on for a few days and she doesn't want to lose both at the beginning. There is a high chance of killing both of them, but she doesn't agree with the damage tactic of injuring 1000 enemies and losing 800. 36 Strategies, Walking is the best strategy. She can't afford it, can't she still avoid it? Putting aside his thoughts, Tang Xinyun took off his sunglasses, withdrew the hundred yuan bill that the old man had held in his hand with one hand, and stuffed the sunglasses and newspaper back with the other. Thank you, old man. You are really a good person. She knows that if someone gives her a good card, that person will definitely be very happy it was taught to her by the system. Sitting on a leisurely bench, the elderly person in disarray in the wind. Today's sky is the worst he has ever seen. After Tang Xinyun did not return to the hotel, she went to the big pharmacy again. We only have two boxes of 200 medical masks left in stock, do you think so? Tang Xinyun knew that other players had already taken action, and it was also her fault for not being careful enough to forget about this incident. She was full of regret, but also took the only 200 medical masks. It can be recalled that she saw white mist and suddenly murky lake water not long ago, and Tang Xinyun asked the shop owner if they had a gas mask. After collecting three gas masks and fifteen replacement gas filters into the space, Tang Xinyun returned to the hotel. 
she blocked all the ventilation openings and locked the windows. On the night of the third day of the game, in the early morning, Tang Shenyun was awakened from the cold. She propped herself up and sat up, drowsy-eyed. She opened her phone and glanced at the real dot time temperature reading, which was 3 degrees Celsius. Tang Shenyun groped for the air conditioning remote control placed on the bedside table, turned on the heating button, and took out a thick cotton quilt from the space. He curled up and felt that his limbs were no longer stiff. The cold room was gradually filled with heating, and Tang Shenyun adjusted it to a suitable temperature before tucking his head into the bed and falling asleep in a daze. In the morning, Tang Shenyun woke up from the heat again. She hugged the clothes she had changed and took a shower, then changed them. She also folded the quilt and placed it in the cabinet of the hotel room, while turning off the air conditioning. Chapter 5 Cancer City 05 You are listening at NovelFull.audio During the day, the high temperature in Cancer City wished it could scorch people. Tang Shenyun was tossed around heavily last night and woke up in the morning with the heat. The taste of ice and fire was uncomfortable, and she was honored to have caught a cold. Tang Shenyun stayed in the hotel all day without going out. After taking medicine, he lay in bed feeling lethargic, squinting his eyes and brushing his phone, claiming to study new things well in order to better adapt to society. On a new day, Tang Shenyun slept until she woke up naturally. She felt refreshed and full of energy, so she went to the self.service restaurant for breakfast. On the way, I heard something related to her, the construction site in the city has changed to a new chief foreman, claiming that the former foreman has fallen ill, with unclear speech and looks like a dementia. The current chief foreman is elected by their workers themselves and is said to have the surname Lu. Tang Xinyun swallowed the milk-yellow packet in her hand, leaving a lingering fragrance on her lips and teeth. It tasted so delicious that she couldn't help but half close her eyes, propped up her chin, chewed slowly, and took a sip of hot milk to deliver. After breakfast, the large screen TV in the lobby began broadcasting morning news. Recently, the temperature in Cancer City has significantly decreased in the evening, with a large temperature difference compared to the daytime. Currently, some citizens have experienced frostbite. We hope that all citizens pay attention to their physical health and actively take measures to keep warm. Meanwhile, according to experts' inference, this is the first time in the history of Cancer City that there has been a significant temperature difference between day and night, and the difference will intensify in the future. Tang Xinyun returned to his room and counted the supplies in his space again. He took out a few boxes of mineral water and instant noodles and put them in the room. After organizing the space, he could squeeze out some more space. Time passed too quickly, and in the blink of an eye, dusk entered. The dazzling orange sunset also took away its last tail, replaced by a bright moon. At eleven o'clock at night, on Baichao Road in Cancer City, a truck was traveling at a constant speed in the darkness. The bright headlights illuminated the pitch-black night not far away, and the piercing cold wind made the truck driver exhale hot air and inhale cold air in his lungs, causing him to cough a few times. The driver's eyes were a bit blurry, and he blinked hard, trying to squeeze out tears, but it didn't have any effect. The night is already prone to accidents, and the driver's heart is becoming increasingly frustrated. His hands holding the steering wheel are bulging with veins, and he can't bear it anymore. He holds the steering wheel with one hand. The other hand vigorously rubbed the eyes, and blood quietly climbed up to the eyeball. The foreign object in the eyes was full of sensation, causing a sharp pain in the eyes. The man's eyes were crimson, and the piercing pain in his eyes made him release his hand for a moment. The steering wheel suddenly lost control, and he gritted his teeth and reached out to grab it back but the steering wheel did not stabilize, and the truck almost overturned. In the dark of the night, a truck was originally moving at a constant speed. In the next moment, the truck seemed like a wild horse that had run free, swaying like a dragon on the road. Until the piercing sound of a sudden brake pierced through the silent night, the truck driver's heart pounded like thunder. He was sweating profusely on his forehead, 
sipping on the cold air, and his mind finally became clear. Almost, he's going to compete with death in Mahjong. I don't know what's going on today, he always feels uncomfortable in his eyes. The man noticed through the camera function of his phone that his eyes were crimson, as if he was sick, which frightened his men and made them tremble and sweat profusely. The truck driver only thought of himself as staying up late and working overtime. When he was tired and didn't rest well, he made up his mind to take a break from working overtime to earn money. Fate is the only way to spend money, he cherishes his life. Everything that happened on Baichiao Road was shrouded in thick darkness, and trucks continued to move towards the thick darkness. At the edge of Cancer City, several bubbles suddenly appeared on the calm lake surface, shattered by the cold wind, and the white mist seemed to have become heavier again. On the fifth day of the game, Tang Xinyun went to the self.service restaurant as usual to have a meal. As soon as he bit down the hot meat buns on the plate, the morning news began again. The female host held the microphone and stood by the edge of Cancer City. Behind her was a deep blue sky and a vibrant scene, but it was worth noting that the lake seemed a bit murky again. I am currently standing by the edge of Cancer City, where the lake water has become inexplicably turbid. According to meteorologists and geographers, this phenomenon may be related to the recent temperature difference between day and night. Secondly, Cancer City is experiencing a once-dot-in-dot-a-dot-century foggy weather, reminding citizens in front of the TV to take precautions when going out, drive carefully on the road, and pay attention to traffic safety. Tang Xinyun swallowed the spicy meat filling in her mouth and finished breakfast like a whirlwind. She planned to go to the city to take a look. Returning to the room, Tang Xinyun put on a medical mask and a thin sunscreen jacket over short sleeves before leaving the door. The Orange Hotel is still some distance away from the city, and it is difficult to find an empty DD ride today, which used to be easy to take. After finally getting into the car, Tang Xinyun smiled and talked to the driver with a smile on his lips. You don't know, because of the one stud in Dari Dot Century white mist, people in the city take a taxi to watch, so it's not easy to take a taxi. The driver glanced at Tang Xinyun through the rearview mirror and smiled as he spoke. Tang Xinyun rolled up the car window next to him, checked his medical mask again, and smiled as he spoke, have you never seen white mist before? I'm here for a trip to Cancer City, so it happened to me. Upon hearing this, the driver nodded in agreement and said, this is indeed the first time white fog has appeared. The location of Cancer City is very advantageous, with sunny and rainy weather throughout the year, let alone white fog. Finally, he asked in confusion, are you feeling unwell? I see you're wearing a medical mask. Tang Xinyun turned his head to look at the restless crowd outside the window. The closer he was to the city, the more people there were, and it was even difficult for vehicles to enter. It's a bit uncomfortable, Tang Xinyun pretended to cough a few times, Master, let's get off here. After paying on his phone, Tang Xinyun stood among the crowd, with excited faces on the faces of the citizens around him. Some even approached the railing, posing perfectly to take a photo with the white mist. Knowing that something was wrong with the inexplicable appearance of the white mist, Tang Xinyun naturally wouldn't approach the crowd in a daze. She withdrew from the pushing crowd and stood on the street, her eyes piercing inexplicably. I lowered my head and rubbed my eyes, but I felt that my breathing was a bit rough. Tang Xinyun, who seemed to be experiencing symptoms, is now afraid to stay here for a moment. In the cultivation world, she can still rely on her internal power to drive out toxins, and now she can only endure it. Tang Xinyun rode a shared bike back and saw a small car accident scene where friction occurred on the way. She stood with one leg in place, squinting at the center of the crowd, the object of discussion. The driver of the car that collided with someone got off the car in a swaying manner, resembling a drunken drunkard. His eyes were crimson, his forehead was bulging with veins, and his fierce expression scared those around him to take a few steps back. He stumbled under his feet and knelt down beside the injured person who had been hit. His eyes were about to crack, and he suddenly spat out a large mouthful of foul-smelling black blood, splattering the injured person's face. 
This incident frightened everyone around them into screaming and panicking, causing them to scatter and flee. Someone who quickly reacted quickly called for an ambulance. Tang Xinyun, who witnessed everything, used the cover of his pocket to take out two masks from the space and stack them on top of the original masks. Glancing around at many people wearing masks, Tang Xinyun guessed in her heart that they were mostly players. At the same time, she also noticed that the woman with a tear stain and the man with sunglasses were standing nearby wearing masks to watch. Tang Xinyun lowered his eyes and rode his shared bike to the hotel in a flash. The first thing she did when she went back was to wash her whole body and take out the alcohol spray she had bought before to disinfect herself from head to foot. Pull out the plug and let the water flow out of the bathtub. Tang Xinyun disinfected the bathroom again. All the clothes she wore today were thrown out of the room by her. After finishing everything, Tang Xinyun lay on the big bed. Chapter 6 Cancer City 06 you are listening at NovelFull.audio. On the sixth day of the game, a large number of patients with uncomfortable eyes flooded into Cancer City People's Hospital. Ophthalmologists were almost too busy, and they carefully summarized the symptoms of those patients. Without exception, there is congestion in the eyes and chest pain and tightness. Write down your elegant name, and the doctor will ask them to go for a chest CT scan as well. Then take down the report form and show it to him. The doctor who received the report had a serious expression on his face. He frowned and chuckled softly, pushing the glasses on his nose bridge. Have you been in contact with anything lately? The patient covered his mouth and coughed a few times, his face pale and mentally drained. Upon hearing this, he shook his head and nodded again, I used to go to the lake to join in the fun, but everyone has gone so it may not be the reason. For a while, the doctor couldn't find the cause. He led the patient into the inner room and hesitated under the patient's anxious and fearful expression, saying, there is a small amount of fibrosis in your lungs, but don't be too pessimistic. The current medical technology can effectively alleviate it. He didn't have the heart to continue. Pulmonary fibrosis is caused by many reasons, and the incidence rate of middle-aged and elderly people is high. At present, the treatment effect of Cancer City is limited, and the possibility of recovery from this lung disease is almost zero. The patient also knew that the doctor was just comforting him. He waved his hand and didn't make a fuss in the hospital. He left the emergency room in a daze and walked on the street. The scorching sun couldn't dispel the darkness in his heart. Why did this calamity befall him, even though he was still so young? We have sent away batches of patients, and to some extent, pulmonary fibrosis has been detected, but the difference lies in the severity. Quack. The door to the emergency room was slammed and the middle-aged woman with a sharp and sarcastic face shouted, My son is not as serious as what you said. You are just scamming us poor people's money. Oh my goodness. How can we still survive this? A doctor walked out of the emergency room, his face flushed with anger from a woman in front of him who couldn't distinguish right from wrong. He was breathing rapidly, his chest heaving violently, and his fingers trembling as he spoke, you. You. Others approached the doctor and pulled the woman who was still throwing things on the ground and refusing to let go into the hall. The woman also knew that she was embarrassed now. After struggling for a long time and seeing no one asking, she got up from the ground and coldly pulled out her son, who was shivering behind the crowd. Useless thing. Having seen enough of the hustle and bustle, everyone dispersed. They believed themselves to be of high quality, and even if the results were not satisfactory, they would not do such a thing in public. Seeing the contemptuous gaze of the crowd, the woman glared fiercely and pulled her timid son away from the hospital. Tang Xinyun lay in bed and opened his phone, scrolling through today's hot search about hospitals receiving digital diagnoses of patients with lung diseases. The post is set up very high, with many people watching the excitement, as well as those who sympathize with the same illness haha. Hashtag I'm only 18, just an adult, how could heaven make such a joke on me? Hashtag there's no way to save it. 
the current medical technology in Cancer City cannot cure it. Even if it is alleviated, it will cost a huge amount of money. Even if my family empties out, it won't buy my life. Hashtag family, I plan to go to Twin Cities for treatment. I hope I can live. Hashtag is there a great person taking me to Twin Cities. I'm so young. I don't want to die. Hashtag I was thinking about farting earlier, even the Central News reported on this matter, with the host fully armed and wearing a medical mask standing at the hospital entrance, speaking slowly towards the black camera. Tang Xinyan scanned her eyes and turned off her phone. She got up and went to the French window. The view on the seventh floor was excellent. She squinted against the light and looked into the distance, the white mist has thickened again. At 10.19 a.m. the next day, a serious car accident occurred on Baichiao Road. The truck driver was fatigued while driving, and the wheels of the car ran straight over a small car towards the roadblock. Currently, four people died, and 19 people are seriously injured and are being rushed to the hospital for emergency treatment. On the asphalt road, the sound of police sirens and ambulance calls intertwined, and the speeding ambulance rushed to the scene. A truck loaded with iron and steel bars was divided at the front and back, with steel bars piercing through the windshield of the truck, like blooming iron flowers of death, leaving dried blood on them. The truck driver died on the spot, half of the car body was crushed and flattened, and the smell of rust permeated by Chiao Road. The mournful cries were dispersed by the hot and bloody wind. The police arrived at the scene and commanded calmly. They pulled out a cordon and divided a small group of people to guard Baichiao Road. Others checked the list of casualties and notified their families to assist the rescue personnel in their work. The medical staff standing beside the barricade were stunned and lost in thought. He rubbed his eyes incredulously, and his shoulders were suddenly vigorously padded, causing him to tremble all over and suddenly turn his head. The man in protective clothing breathed a sigh of relief when he saw the rescue workers in the same group. You scared me to death sooner or later, he said upon hearing this, the rescuers chuckled and said, are you still talking about me? What are you doing here if you don't keep up? If you want to slack off, I might have caught you. The man in the protective suit waved his hand and pointed to the deep grass not far away. He hesitated and spoke again, saying, it's nothing like that. I just saw something flashing through the grass. Following the direction of the man's finger, the person carefully observed the circle. There was no movement in the distant grass, and he shrugged, don't scare yourself. Maybe you're too tired and have blurred eyes. I suggest you go check your ophthalmology department. The man in the protective suit remained silent. He scratched his head in confusion, turned around, and followed behind him. Before getting into the ambulance, he didn't give up on looking at the grass, but still nothing appeared. There were not many people left to investigate on Baichiao Road, standing scattered outside the warning line. They received the captain's request to stay in place and strictly control passing vehicles. Not far behind them, half a furry head lay quietly in a pool of blood, with its flesh-red brain moving irregularly. At the same time, a rabbit with half a skull opened its crimson eyes, its skin and flesh were torn apart, its broken front legs twisted, it shook its head, heard the distant siren sound, blinked and disappeared into the shadows, leaving only putrid black blood seeping into the soil. The four people who died on the spot were taken to the hospital and claimed by their families, while the nineteen injured were taken to the people's hospital. On the ambulance, the doctor wearing protective clothing and a medical mask nervously stared at the instrument beside him. Suddenly, the injured person coughed violently, and the oxygen mask quickly raised white water droplets. In an instant, just as the doctor thought it was just an ordinary cough, the injured person sprayed black blood clots in their mouth, choking into their nose and causing massive bleeding in their lungs, almost resulting in suffocation and death. The doctor dared not stop for a moment, and his subordinates kept rescuing him, shouting loudly, drive faster, the patient's condition is severe. Transient suffocation shock has occurred. The ambulance honked all the way and stopped at the hospital gate at lightning speed. The car door opened, 
and the ambulance parked early at the entrance. Medical staff quickly lifted the injured and got out of the car. As soon as they put on new oxygen masks, the surface was quickly covered with blood and water. The snow.white sheets they threw down also showed large blood splatters, with small black blood clots sticking to them. Upon closer inspection, the blood clots seemed to be still wriggling, and it was unclear whether they were caused by the vibration of getting off the car, the people queuing in the hospital gasped for breath as they trembled and spread their views through the chat group, their eyes filled with shock and panic. The hospital was overcrowded, and the red light in the emergency room stayed on all night until it went out in the early morning. Outside the door, the family members were anxiously waiting, and the doctor told them that the injured had been rescued. They were sent to the intensive care unit for observation. The other four deceased individuals have been brought home by the families who came to claim them, preparing for the funeral. Chapter 7 Cancer City 07 you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Early in the morning, the white mist completely shrouded the entire Cancer City at night. Tang Xinyun had been staying in the hotel for the past few days, having three meals a day in his room and not eating any more. Suddenly, the street outside the window burst into a loud roar, and people screamed in panic. A car ran over pedestrians and collided with a big tree on the roadside, causing the car to explode in seconds. Iron plates splattered everywhere, and all passers-by were spared. A sharp iron plate pierced into the woman's skull, causing blood to run wild. The driver who had his chest pierced stumbled out of the cab, his face completely unrecognizable, with shattered glass covering his entire face, drenched in blood. Those crimson eyes swept towards the woman lying on the side, wailing fiercely. They pounced at the woman with a ferocious expression, their sharp teeth biting her tender neck fiercely. Blood droplets splashed onto the asphalt road, blood splattered, creating beautiful and tense curves in the air, playing the prelude to panic. The crowd instantly exploded, and everyone shuttled back and forth in fear, pushing and shoving each other. The woman who was bitten vomited blood from her mouth, and in less than a minute, she wobbled and stood up straight, convulsing and propping up her neck. Her red eyes opened wide, tearing at the person closest to her. At the same time, in a white morning ground, the coffin where the body was placed banged, and the guardian rolled his Adam's apple, swallowing saliva and asking the people next to him to call for someone to come over first. He and a few others tentatively approached and came to the side of the coffin. As soon as my fingers touched the cold coffin, the lid was knocked off with a bang. The man let out a cry, covered his bleeding nose, and tears flickered in his eyes. I saw a red-eyed man crawling out of the coffin, making a hee-hee sound in his mouth, convulsing all over, and biting the living person at his feet with bared teeth. Ah! Help me! Half of the man's face was torn off alive, exposing his fat and muscle tissue to the air. He was writhing in pain on the ground, and after a few seconds, he twitched in place, rolling his eyes upwards. The person who had just shaken the person over swallowed saliva, turned around and ran when the situation was bad, but was knocked down by the crazy red-eyed person and took a big bite of white flesh. The people in the Ling Tang were not spared from the disaster. Tang Xinyun put down the bread in her hand and heard the heart-wrenching screams in the street. She opened the curtains and looked down. I saw the streets in chaos, cars roaring and thick black smoke everywhere. The person who was desperately trying to escape was bitten by a bloody person behind them, tearing off a piece of meat. After falling to the ground for ten seconds, he suddenly convulsed all over and stood up stiffly with his limbs stiff. His crimson eyes swept around and rushed towards another living person. It's like being possessed by ghosts in the cultivation world, being influenced by ghosts and making some incredible actions. Tang Xinyun knew that this was a living dead person, also known as a zombie. She stood by the window and looked at the movements and characteristics of the zombies before sitting back. The escape game has fully descended upon this once bustling city. In another room, a man wearing black short sleeves stood by the window, staring coldly at the bustling street, tearing open the milk and drinking it. 
His jet black long hair was securely tied around his head, only tied with a black headband. Those affectionate peach blossom eyes were soaked in cold frost, and the bridge of the nose was straight, giving off a cold and indifferent expression. A knife stands beside the man, with a gun attached to his waist. The city is in chaos, the public security is broken, the thin defense line of morality is completely destroyed by the fear of death, and people who hide in the dark are sharpening their swords. Tang Xinyun sat in the room, and there was constant activity in the hallway outside the door. The hurried footsteps were chaotic, and no one dared to open the doors of the bustling hotel. People huddled in the corner, clutching their phones with both hands, and a terrifying fear enveloped every living person's heart. On the ninth night of the game, a mournful cry came from the hotel and then calmed down, but Tang Xinyun knew it was just the beginning. She still stayed at the hotel, turned on the TV, and broadcasted the news. The female journalist stood on the chaotic street, her face full of panic, her tone trembling but still holding on to the microphone to broadcast. Citizens who have been infected with madness in the city, for the safety of all citizens, we hope that they can temporarily stay at home. Cancer City will regularly deliver supplies to everyone. Ah! Help! Help! The camera shook violently, and the frame blurred with the movement. The female host's screams of fear and desperate cries for help were like a hammer hitting everyone's heart hard. In the final scene of the scene, the female host with a face covered in blood twisted her body and convulsed from the ground, stomping on the camera with one foot. Screen Termination Tang Xinyun counted the supplies in her space and found that they were enough to support her life for twenty days. Heavy fog is everywhere, and even sneaks in through ventilation openings. Now Tang Xinyun knows that the source of cholera is mostly this, once dot in dot a dot century, white fog. She locked the bathroom door early on, and stuffed clothes and other materials tightly together to ensure confidentiality and airtightness. In the early morning, the sun still rises, and the warm sunshine scattered towards the city is cut off by white mist. The temperature remains at around 35 degrees Celsius, without sunlight, and the high temperature does not decrease. The air is a bit more stuffy. A gunshot rang out outside the Orange Hotel, followed by intense curses, and finally a painful scream ended everything. There was a hurried sound of walking in the corridor, and Tang Xinyun came to the door with a cat on her body. Before she could hear the sound, the door was knocked on. Tang Xinyun remained silent and did not give up on anyone who came. He continued to knock and the intensity gradually increased, indicating the posture of Tang Xinyun leading the zombie over without opening the door. Little sister, I know you're inside. Please open the door and save my little sister. The girl wearing a cool long dress wore a mournful face, pleading bitterly. Tang Xinyun didn't open the door, but asked, what's up? The girl heard someone answer, her eyes suddenly lit up, and an inexplicable emotion flashed in her eyes. She tilted her head slightly and caught a glimpse of the few people at the corner of the corridor, suppressing her guilt. Please help my little sister. They're forcing me and even touching me. You open the door first and I'll go in. Tang Xinyun hugged his chest with both hands and lazily leaned against the wall behind the door. Upon hearing this, he curled his lips and smiled, playing with the pistol in his hand. She's not so kind-hearted yet, I don't know how powerful this modern thermal weapon is. It seems that there will be an arrow target for her to test soon. Seeing the woman not answering, the girl gritted her teeth and cursed Tang Xinyun in her heart, little sister. Can you give me some food? We are both women, you should help me. This made Tang Xinyun very happy, and a contemptuous chuckle spread through the door, landing in the ears of the still reluctant girl. Her soft and beautiful face twisted and twisted for a moment. The few men hiding at the corner saw that the girl couldn't deceive the woman at all, so they cursed loudly and said, Her grandmother, stinky women are not stupid. Ergo, go and drag her over to me. Standing behind the scar man, Ergo lowered his head and waist. Upon hearing this, he curled his lips and gave a wicked smile, 
deliberately stepping towards the girl in a long dress. A strong sense of powerlessness surged in Wang Chiolin's heart as she looked at the tightly closed room door, her eyes flashing with a fierce gleam of resentment. If she opens the door and lets her in, how could she not escape the clutches of those people? A severe pain came from her scalp, and Wang Chiolin's long hair was forcefully grabbed by the second dog. She wanted to scream loudly, preferably attracting the zombie and dying together with these people. But she dare not, she still wants to live well, even if she is struggling to survive. Wang Chiolin clenched her lips, a painful groan overflowing from the corner of her mouth. Her eyes were filled with tears, and her eyes turned red. Chapter 8 Cancer City 08 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Ergo obeyed the scar man's words and grabbed the girl's long hair tightly, dragging her all the way to the corner of the corridor. Wang Chiolin only felt a burning sensation on her back. At first, she struggled with strength, her ankles vigorously kicking in the air. She breathed rapidly and looked at the dazzling light above her head, desperately watching the door of the room called Sheng getting further and further away from her. The girl's back was stripped off with a layer of flesh, and her heels were worn to a bloody mess. Tears silently flowed down her cheeks and into her black hair. Shadow fell on her face, and Wang Chiolin was slapped hard by the scar as soon as she lifted her eyes. Her cheeks bulged visibly to the naked eye, and the red palm print strongly satisfied the scar man's desire for violence. He reached out and pulled up the painful girl, his foul breath hitting her face. The man's rough fingertips perfunctorily wiped away the tears from the corners of her eyes, and raised his hand to pat her face. Don't play those useless thoughts with me. Do you think even if that woman opens the door for you, you can escape a disaster? The scarred man's mouth curved into a mischievous smile, and under Wang Chiolin's frightened gaze, he slowly uttered a few words. Daydreaming. Her head was heavily hit on the floor, and Wang Chiolin's eyes were dizzy, her consciousness gradually blurring. Seeing that the woman under his command was no longer moving, the scar man let out a disgusted tisk. He let go of his hand and looked ahead with a lewd smile. Second dog, go back. The few people quickly disappeared around the corner, and Tang Shenyun, sitting on the bed, showed no concern for the follow dot up of the matter. The law of the jungle is a survival condition in every world, and a weak heart will only harm oneself. On the eleventh day of the game, the smell of rust permeated the streets of Cancer City into the white mist, and no living people were seen on the streets. Zombies wander aimlessly around, some even shedding carrion while walking. The door of the people's hospital was splattered with dried blood, and blood fingerprints were densely padded on it. At a glance, I couldn't help but be enveloped by the breath of despair, holding my breath. In a hallway of the hospital, a man in a black assault suit wielded a knife and slashed through a path of blood. His boots were soaked in blood, and a ferocious head rolled off his feet. He pushed open the pharmacy door and searched extensively before leaving. The survivor hiding in the dark called out to the man, and as he turned his head, he was so scared that he almost bit his tongue and stuttered, Summer, Summer Star Sleep. Upon hearing this, Xia Xingmian casually glanced at her and was about to continue walking forward. He dodged the woman's pull and looked at her coldly, with a flash of killing intent in his eyes. Please help me. I can give you everything. I almost died. The man turned his head and was about to leave, but the woman behind him refused to let go. She bit her lip and fiercely approached to embrace the man's waist, but put a knife in her throat, with rotten blood dripping from the blade. Get lost. The woman was so frightened that she collapsed in a pool of blood, her body soaked in blood. The fear in her heart was like a big net, making her powerless and cowardly to call Xia Xingyan again. She could only watch the man's back disappear from her sight. Tang Xinyun opened a bag of self-heating hot pot for herself and served it with self-heating rice. She felt that modern people are really smart and even make delicious self-heating fast food, which is simple and convenient. The aroma wafted out of the room, deep in the hallway, and Scar Man was fascinated by it, sniffing the aroma lightly, 
his Adam's apple rolling, and he was swallowing saliva crazily. The scar man ordered someone to go out and take a look. He sat in a dark room, littered with miscellaneous garbage and scattered around the corner, with flies flying everywhere. He was full of thoughts about the aroma of the rice he had just smelled. The detective's henchman returned and stood in front of the man, rubbing his hands like a fly. Boss, it's 703, the same household that the little bitch didn't scam out last time, he said the scar man curled his lips and smiled, pinching his toothpick to pick out the chili peppers stuck between his teeth. He pursed them in his mouth with an intoxicated expression, propping himself up on the sofa. Just as he was about to leave, his arm weighed heavily. The man turned his head and saw Wang Chiolin holding his arm with a low eyebrow and a soft touch that made the man's heart skip a beat. His pornographic gaze looked at the girl naked. What's wrong? The scar man was in a good mood, his rough and rough hands caressing the girl's round shoulders, and the thoughts in his eyes were self-evident. Wang Chiolin pretended to be shy and gritted her teeth fiercely in her heart. She smiled sweetly and spoke in a pure and malicious tone, Sister 703 looks like a fairy, and I think she has a lot of resources. Otherwise, how could she eat and drink so recklessly? Boss, as long as we take her down, we will definitely not worry about food and drink. Wang Chiolin's eyes flashed with a sinister gleam. She is actually not sure if Tang Xinyun has so many supplies. She has been invaded by this scar. Why can Tang Xinyun enjoy a delicious meal in the room? Moreover, thinking of the woman's indifferent words, Wang Chiolin's heart became even more twisted and resentful. If Tang Xinyun had opened the door at that time, she could have escaped the coercion of this old man. Everything she encountered was because Tang Xinyun did not open the door for her. Scar didn't respond, and his eyes were half squinted with murky colors. Wang Chiolin didn't want to miss this good opportunity to kill with a borrowed knife. She showed weakness and coquettishly seduced the man, and finally agreed. They discussed tonight how to deal with Tang Xinyun. The men present did not take the 703 woman seriously. Although she was not deceived, women are destined to be less comfortable than men in the escape game. Their role is only to relieve men's worries. The moon set, the sun rose again, and the concentration of white mist deepened. Tang Xinyun could only see within ten meters, severely limiting his field of vision. The number of deaths in the city is increasing. Tang Xinyun learned through the game system that there are still 2,800 players and less than 100,000 game NPCs left. She had just wiped her cheeks with cold water when a noise came from the door, indicating that the visitor was not kind. Tang Xinyun, the old god, was sitting on the ground preparing to boil water. The rice he had yesterday was served with noodles today. She adheres to the concept of a healthy diet and eats every meal in a new way. The door was slapped with a loud bang, and Tang Xinyun reluctantly put down the noodles in his hand. He stood up and walked to the door, coldly questioning, what's up? The sound was indeed good. The scar man's thick purple tongue licked his lips and his throat was dry and itchy. He kindly reminded, Girl, it's not safe for you to stay alone in the room. There are many people here who will protect you, brothers. Open the door and let your brother in. Tang Xinyun sneered and said, Cluck, are you a hen? Do you like laying eggs so much? The scar man choked silently, his forehead bulging with veins. Seeing that deception was useless, he immediately tore open his disguised face and fiercely threatened, stinky women. Open the door. Otherwise, I'll break through the door and throw you down to feed the zombie. There was no movement inside the house, and the scar man thought it was his threat that made the woman afraid. He couldn't help but approach the cat's eye and try to look inside. The person didn't see it, but kicked it onto the iron plate. Tang Xinyun arrived at the door, flipped the dagger in her hand, curled her lips and smiled, then swung out the knife with force. The dagger in hand pierced the cat's eye and penetrated into the man's eye. Ah! You son of a bitch! I'm going to chop you up and throw you to feed the zombies. 
Oh my eyes. The scarred man covered his disabled right eye with one hand, and blood flowed from between his fingers. The pain made him grit his teeth and say, I'll split open the door of this stinky woman. I'll see if I can kill you after taking you down. The windows of the corridor had long been closed and sealed, and the doors of the escape routes had also been locked. A faint white mist sneaked into the corridor from the ventilation opening on the ceiling above the heads of a few people. The few people present didn't realize it. They were complacent in their hearts. Fortunately, they had foresight and sealed off the seventh floor, making it much easier to get things done now. Chapter 9 Cancer City 09 You are listening at NovelFull.audio White mist was everywhere, especially halfway through the game time when Tang Xinyun looked coldly at the door that had been hacked out with an axe. She quickly took out a gas mask from the space and put on a complete set of protective clothing, ready to go. Tang Xinyun raised his eyebrows lightly, with a smile on his lips and a glint in his eyes. It seems like today is a good day for her to test the power of thermal weapons. The people outside the door were gasping for breath from chopping. They were all strong on the outside but weak on the inside. They were used to being lazy and lazy on weekdays. In recent days, they have been following Scar Man in the hotel and not doing anything. Coupled with not having enough to eat, their strength has been exhausted very quickly. The white mist drifted silently in the air, being sucked into the lungs by several people gasping for breath, taking root and falling leaves. Just before a few people were about to split the door open, the shaky wooden door was opened from the inside out, and the men outside the door looked delighted. Scar walked into the room first and saw the woman wearing protective clothing, mocking her for making a fuss. The seventh floor had already been sealed to death by him, so there was no threat. The man's scorching gaze swept over Tang Xinyin's entire body, revealing a hint of greed in his heart. He thought to himself that getting this spicy woman while also getting a protective suit for free would be a cost-effective deal. I'm telling you, take off your protective suit and give it to me now. Maybe I can be kind enough to save you a dog's life when the time comes. Upon hearing this, Tang Xinyun took a few steps forward. The scarred man covered his injured eyes with a bitter smile at the corner of his mouth and said, You're so clever. Ah. My eyes. Tang Xinyun flashed over to Scar Man and once again disabled his other eye before anyone around him took action. The Scar Man rolled down in pain his mournful cries awakening the men who were still in shock. They exhaled their turbid breath and pressed step by step, dare to hurt our boss, I see you're tired of living. Tang Xinyun let out an, oh, sound, and as several men rushed towards him, he took out his gun from his pocket. With a few bangs, blood flower returned within a limited time and exploded into a dazzling figure in the air. The magazine thumped on the floor, and the remaining people trembled all over. They swallowed saliva and looked at their brother who had been hit by the bullet, as well as at Tang Xinyun, who was full of interest. They only wanted to quickly escape from this place of trouble. Tang Xinyun's eyes were filled with excitement. She didn't expect that the killing power of the hot weapon was quite high. Her accuracy was always good, and besides, the recoil of the pistol was not strong. When playing, it really caught her heart. The sharp and piercing sound of gunfire caused the survivors in the hotel to complain in their hearts. This person is really not afraid of the gunfire causing zombies, they are still afraid. Other people Tang Xinyun didn't have the heart to deal with because the game released new missions, surviving players are requested to go to the Electric Tower Pearl in the center of Cancer City. The time limit is 24 hours, and players who do not reach it will be considered dead. Tang Xinyun took out his phone and glanced at the current time, which was around 9 o'clock in the morning. Her gaze swept over the retreating person, and then she glanced at the girl in a long dress hiding behind a group of men, sneering coldly in her heart. Without consuming her physical strength and resources, these few people may find it difficult to hold out until the end of the game. She didn't need to do it herself, it would be more interesting for the game to kill them. At the same time, Tang Xinyun also noticed the white mist spreading at the feet of everyone. 
she took a few steps forward under the frightened gaze of several people. Tang Xinyun walked out of the room, and the few people were so scared that they retreated to the room deep in the corridor, peering at her every move through the cat's eyes. Seeing that the woman had no intention of pursuing victory, several people breathed a sigh of relief and knelt limply on the floor. The scarred man's eyes have been damaged and are no longer useful. They tacitly left their former boss outside the door, praying in their hearts that if they tormented him, they would not torture them again. The remaining few people exchanged a glance, their ferocity in their eyes undisguised. Now that there are no leaders, no one wants to become the leader of the team and enjoy the feeling of being pursued. Wang Chiu-lin curled up and sat in the corner of the wall. She gritted her silver teeth tightly, wishing to crush her back teeth, her eyes flashing with mockery and resentment. A man with a heart full of slander and scars is useless, as he has lost both his life and his life. At the same time, she felt lost in her mind, recalling the pistol and protective suit in the woman's hand not long ago. She gritted her lower lip and quietly glanced at the people who were entangled in the fight, then ran out of the room with a hard face. A few men noticed the girl running away, but they didn't pay attention. Because no matter who the leader is in the end, the fleeing woman will inevitably be beaten up. Tang Xinyun stood in the hallway, looking up through her goggles to scan the still-functioning ventilation vent. She carried a backpack to conceal her spatial abilities, and tools such as a flashlight were stuffed into the backpack, along with a few slices of bread and a few bottles of water. The escape route of the hotel was locked with chains, and taking the stairs was no longer feasible. Tang Xinyun now has three options. Forcibly taking the stairs, taking the elevator, and breaking the window. Although the floor she lives on is high, she has ropes on her body that she can climb and jump off. So the feasibility of breaking the window is very high, and the noise will be much smaller than the first two. Tang Xinyun came to the window and looked down through the glass window. There are many protruding platforms on the exterior walls of the hotel, which are used to place outdoor air conditioning units. Just enough to leave her a foothold. Tang Xinyun made a firm decision. Jumping out of the window is feasible. As soon as she placed her hand on the window, a sharp and hoarse cry came from behind. No way. You will kill all of us. Tang Xinyun raised his eyebrows and turned to look back, not surprised to see the familiar face. She shrugged and spread out her hands, what does your life and death have to do with me? You. Wang Chiu-lin didn't expect the woman in front of her to be so cold-blooded. She choked and then lowered her head to show weakness. Little sister, I know I did something wrong before, and I apologize. Tang Xinyun hugged her chest with both hands, leaning against the window, her long legs overlapping, and her toes touching the ground. Wang Chiu-lin gritted her teeth fiercely in her heart, and the villain in her heart wished to tear that disgusting face apart. She put away her malicious thoughts, forced out a few tears, and clasped her hands together, saying, Little sister, I was also forced into helplessness. Please forgive me, okay? I know I was wrong. Okay, I'll forgive you, Tang Xinyun observed the jealousy and resentment overflowing from the girl's eyes. She only felt amused in her heart, and Tang Xinyun was clear about the crocodile's tears. Escape games are the most likely to inspire evil in people's hearts. She easily said that sentence, not really forgiving, and she is not a doormat. She can still smile and lick her face when she is being bullied. Looking over the girl with a joyful expression, Tang Xinyun looked at the several people rushing behind her. The corner of his mouth curved upwards, and he kindly extended his hand to point behind Wang Chiu-lin. The joy in Wang Chiu-lin's heart was instantly watered with cold water. She trembled her lips and turned her pale face to look at the people behind her, feeling a blackness in front of her and her blood freezing all over her. The few men chased after him, with a fierce expression on their faces. However, when they saw Tang Xinyun by the window, their footsteps stumbled and they stopped in place, unwilling to move. Wang Chiu-lin also put away the palpitations in her heart. She turned around and walked quickly to Tang Xinyun, wanting to hide behind her. 
Feeling her forehead pressed against the cold muzzle of the gun, Wang Chiolin swallowed her saliva, her hands and feet icy cold, and her breathing tightened. Little sister, what do you mean? Didn't you already choose to forgive me? The fear in Wang Chiolin's eyes made Tang Xinyin chuckle in a good mood. Her pale red eyes lifted upwards, and she pondered for a few breaths as she looked at the people who were feeling a sense of retreat. Her tone was stubborn and said, Is that right? Chapter 10 Cancer City 10 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. She looked at Wang Chiolin, who nodded and pounded her head, and reached for her backpack behind her with the other hand, using its cover to pull out the rope from the space. I changed my mind. Tang Xinyun quickly wrapped a circle of the rope around Wang Chiolin's neck with lightning speed, and tightened the rope in his hands. Wang Chiolin was strangled by the rope, her small face turning red and her eyes were about to crack. Her hands kept pounding and trying to pull out the rope. Tang Xinyun curled his lips and smiled, then suddenly threw the same trap into the air, steadily trapping the few men who wanted to escape. One of her subordinates exerted force, forcing the trapped individuals to stumble forward. The next second, Tang Xinyun pushed open the window and jumped down under the shocked gaze of several people. She was tied with three ropes around her waist and abdomen, and held one in each hand. There was a chaotic sound of airflow in my ears, and my nasal cavity was suffocated. Tang Xinyun staggered his head and took a few deep breaths before regaining his composure. She fell lightly from a high altitude. The few people who were forcefully supporting themselves at the window couldn't express their pain, and they cursed Tang Xinyun to the point of being extremely angry. A few people felt their necks almost broken and didn't want to be pulled out of the window, so they gritted their teeth and forced themselves to support themselves. Ah, uh, um. The man with a face full of pimples softened his arms and half of his body was pulled out of the window by Tang Xinyun. He swallowed saliva crazily, his fingers clasped against the windowsill, and he struggled to hold on. The seventh floor was filled with zombies eagerly gathered around, and the man felt dizzy in front of him. He wished he had passed out now, and it would be better to die directly in a coma. However, the more critical the situation is, the more sober it becomes, and he can only persevere through hard work. Their bodies have all been strengthened by games, making it even more difficult to twist their vertebrae. Tang Xinyin's descent speed is very fast, and she slows down her momentum every time she reaches a prominent platform. As he descended to the third floor, a shattered window suddenly revealed a zombie with half of his scalp bitten off. His clothes on his chest were stained black with blood, and he was clamoring to probe and bite Tang Xinyun. Tang Xinyun kicked his feet hard, avoiding the zombie and continuing to descend. The white mist below the third floor was thick. If Tang Xinyun hadn't heard the sound, she might have been bitten by the zombies on the third floor. The first floor was filled with zombies surrounded by smells, and Tang Xinyun broke through the window and swung into the corridor of the second floor as he approached. She landed handsome, took out her two swords from the space and held them in her hand, cutting off the ropes tied to her body together. The corridor on the second floor had long been occupied, and the half-closed door was knocked open. The zombie limped towards Tang Xinyun, who held both swords and shaved his head. The commotion on the second floor was loud, and the zombie's hee-hee sound attracted the same kind upstairs. Tang Xinyun was not fond of fighting, but mainly wanted to find a brief map and route list of Cancer City in the lobby on the first floor. Because from the moment the system broadcasts a new task, the phone loses its signal and can use nothing except real dot time temperature sensing and recording. Tang Xinyun has not fully explored Cancer City yet, and can only go to the dangerous hinterland to obtain that map. She still has some impression of the location of the map, just in the rest area in front of the cafeteria, where there is a huge bookshelf with a whole stack placed on the wooden platform next to the bookshelf. Previously, Tang Xinyun didn't expect the game system to suddenly crash, which also made her realize that games are constantly changing and anything can become key information. Fortunately, there were two safe passages on the second floor. 
Tang Xinyun flipped his wrist and his two swords sliced iron like mud, lying horizontally on both sides of his body. She bloomed in lotus steps, dodging attacks in the hallway. Wherever she passed, a stunning blood light flashed through her, and behind her lay a zombie separated from her head. Arriving at another safe passage, Tang Xinyun learned from her previous experiences. She walked lightly and swung her double swords before the wandering zombies roared. Tang Xinyun's condition didn't improve much either. The hot breath she exhaled turned into mist, her mask was wet and stuck to her face, and her nasal breathing was somewhat difficult. She didn't dare to change her mask because the white mist on the second floor had settled on her waist, causing more commotion. The white mist floated up with her movements, resembling the moves of a cultivator from a distance, with each sword carrying an immortal aura. Tang Xinyun looked through his misty goggles at the bloody stairwell. The snow dot white walls were splattered into a dark red color, with bloodstains and scratches left from his struggles, revealing terrifying despair everywhere. She withdrew her gaze and slowly descended the stairs against the wall. The stairs were soaked in blood and became sticky. The sticky blood pulled out a red line as she lifted her foot, breaking in mid-air. The zombies upstairs looked up and roared, while the other zombies, like babies learning, followed closely behind and made noises, rising and falling in the silent hotel. The commotion caused by Tang Xinyun was like lightning, and the hotel fell into a dead silence. At the corner of the stairs, Tang Xinyun first poked his head out to patrol. The door of the first floor lobby was shattered to pieces, with glass shards lying quietly in a pool of blood. The white mist settled more in the hall, and Tang Xinyun could only see things within three meters. Within her limited field of vision, she couldn't help but squint her eyes. Tang Xinyun clenched his double swords and lightly mocked himself for being so afraid of death even though he had already died once. She slowly walked down the stairs, and now she finally saw the situation at the front desk. It was a mess, the computer and counter were smashed up and down, and the foul-smelling blood covered the surface with a thin layer of white mist. Tang Xinyin's heart quickened as she carefully felt the turbulent airflow in the air and quickly dodged a sharp claw. The monster hiding in the dark finally appeared, with three heads on its shoulders and a grim expression staring at the little man not far away. Sharp five claws pierced out steel needles shining with cold light, charging towards Tang Xinyin step by step. Tang Xinyun stepped on the table beside him, leaped into mid-air, swiftly turned around in the air, kicked the monster's wide arm, and retreated at the same time. The monster was kicked and couldn't help but stumble forward for two steps. It slowly turned around and swung its sharp subway claws. Tang Xinyun's soft waist pressed down as he watched the dark claws pressed against her cheek, and the tip of his nose seemed to still have a nauseating stench. She stepped back half a step on her chemical protective suit, and the slender body of her long sword, as thin as cicada wings, was swiftly rotated by her like two silver snakes dancing, with the cold light reflecting against her eyes. The commotion of one person and one monster on the first floor was not small. Tang Xinyun had just retreated to the staircase when a layer of cold sweat fell on her back. She awkwardly swung her double swords, one to block the monster's attack, and the other to strangle the zombies rushing from behind. Tang Xinyin's breathing became increasingly difficult, and the breathable protective suit stuck to her, making her movement somewhat difficult. Suddenly, the surrounding zombies cut through Tang Xinyin's protective suit on his waist, and the next second, the cold sword made his brain blossom. Tang Xinyin dared not stay any longer. She needed to change into a new protective suit and mask in a short period of time. She could feel that the cold and penetrating white mist had begun to slip through the crack and adhere to her body. With his bright eyes scanning the scattered picture books on the wooden platform not far away, Tang Xinyun quickly approached the platform as he fought and retreated. She used the collapsed and messy tables and chairs, and then kicked the monster's heart, forcing it to hit the opposite wall heavily, causing the entire ground to tremble.